Hat Van Trek stand. Little pop. Little roll, little bit. Fall off. Put in the headphones. Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. Testing This morning we are right here at be hearing from uh, the executive mayor, Mr. Khala, will be at of Swana with the state of Patras. Shortly we have just seen the parade within the streets of Swana and also we will be talking to Madam Speaker who is Ms. Rachel, um, uh, Ms. Katlaho Rachel Mabe, Ma whom will be, so, will be talking to about um, the integrated development plan. But as it stands, uh, very shortly we'll be talking to uh, the executive mayor as well as the different uh, council members to hear from them as to say what will the state of this entail. And also as he, people of Swan, we've heard from him saying that uh, the first thing from him would be that he would have to bring service delivery to the people of Swan. But that's a little bit later on. Right now we speak to Madam Smith. Speaker. Madam Speaker, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you can explain us, um, as we know, we'll be. Because we have a responsibility as well to lead you know, the city, to share with them what is it that is available budgetary wise and what is it urgent in terms of you know, scientific research and so on and so on. And they also, this art is convenience if there isn't infrastructure, if there isn't service delivery. So, we would really love to hear from them. So, I encourage the citizens of Twani to please at the I political to attend. And just to touch a little on the council, uh, as we know, council sitting this morning can expect from today, station of each belong into a end date sit. Thereafter, in the missed first day of April, that is where political parties will have the opportunity to debate the state capital address by the executive mayor where in can air is only about the presentation of the state where the mayor will share with the people of Swani what is the social economic state of the city right. do you think that as a council you could be prepared for any rowdiness that can arise from the state of the city address from the executive mayor yes, we had your routine 2018 was much better and this will be much much better it's a post may work spectacle and um we prepared as well yesterday we had a programming meeting make sure and i am this i have discussions to a meeting the discussions are not necessary at this point the all councillors will have an opportunity to discuss this matter in their next ordinary sitting of council we do appreciate it Thank you very much. Thank you to other chats at home. Bless you. Have her hated to sit at the Tim Quesh party, but to say that we will be receiving the address from the executive mayor, Mr. Stevens Mohalapa. But we've heard also that uh, the people of Twane should come through for the IDP uh, council or rather IDP uh, meetings where the issues, uh, service delivery issues, as well as issues that are pertaining to the people of Twane will be discussed. And as a result, Madam Speaker is encouraging this, uh, or rather the people of Twane to come through. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Can I please have your attention and please remain on attention as we wait for our podium group to ascend to the podium. Wait together! Parade! Attention!
okay and good for three bars 71 minutes 71 minutes How is my shot looking on the podium? Yeah, that that drop is disturbing me. Mm. The white balance, okay. Sure. But you are better, okay? Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please give a round of applause or put our hands together for our podium group led by the Executive Mayor for the City of His Excellency Councillor Stevens Mukhalapa. The podium of the Mayor of the Police Chief Fire of Tia. Please put your hands together for our podium group. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Daddy is Chaplain Mudipi from the Metro Police uh, Chaplain Services to render the scripture reading and prayer. Chaplain Mudipi. Thank you very much, Program Director. Ladies and gentlemen, let me greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will find our scripture reading this morning from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5 and verse 6. And it reads thus, There is another evil I have seen as I have watched the world go by. Kings and rulers make a grave mistake if they give foolish people great authority and if they fail to give people of proven worth their rightful place of dignity. King Solomon is saying to me and he's saying to you this morning before you become the king, before you become the ruler, before you are given power one day because out of you can be the chief of police in the future, because out of you can be the next mayor, because out of you can be the next director, because out of you can be the next CEO, 
Here's the Tane Metro Police Senior Superintendent Isaac Mahamba who will be explaining in further detail as to what does this parade mean. Senior Superintendent, thank you so much for your time. If you can take us through the parade so that the people of Tane can actually understand what is it that they're viewing right now. Uh, good morning to you and to your viewers as well. Uh, yes, this is a parade. They started around 10 uh, or just before 10 o'clock at Church Square and they parade up, paraded up to here. It's a combination of TMPD members jointly with the EMS. Uh, they drilled from there up until here, as I indicated. Uh, you'll see in between there is, you know, vehicles. That is the strength of the vehicles that you are having or the different units within the department that you are having. For instance, you saw the bike squad are there. You saw the, 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 the horse unit is also there. The dog unit is also there. So now as we are standing here, it's a formalities whereby we started with a national anthem and again there will be you know a wait from our employee wellness uh, the pastor will officially open the service with a word of prayer then from there the executive mayor of the city of Tuani with his interrogate that includes the MMC of community safety and both chiefs that is chief of metropolis uh, general uh, lieutenant general Nkomo and the, the chief of fire they will will be inspecting the parade you know you know normally what you do uh, as, par as, as parade officers or as members of the TMPD we always have to be clean uh, I, it, that's what they'll be checking whether did I really you know polish my shoes did I shave this morning we need you know nice clean shaven metropolis officers that is that and from there they will go inside where the formal council will be sitting whereby again the executive mayor will be delivering the speech let us just hold it for there for right now thank you uh, superintendent and we had your word saying we shouldn't make that mistake we as rulers and kings Heavenly Father, I pray that this mistake that has been made in the past, this mistake that has been continuing, let it stop today. That people of proven worth will be given their rightful place of dignity. So that we can run our city and our country dignifiably so. I pray for this auspicious occasion that Lord, may your grace be upon the city mayor may be upon his speech and everything. Heavenly Father, during this day in the name of Jesus, bless the food that they will eat, every drink and water, let it be blessed, and no weapon formed against any one of them shall prosper. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Chaplain Modupe. I'm going to request the podium group to remain standing as I call upon the Executive Mayor to come to the fore and uh, acknowledge the parade inspection.
Bleach man. It is also a place with a vision like no other. An urban vista ripe for growth and development and an unbounded landscape of opportunity. Capital city of South Africa, seat of the national government and the beating heart of the Gauteng region. This is the city of Tswane. Few can deny the financial and economic powerhouse that is Tswane. It is a city that represents the fastest growing economy in South Africa over the last 15 years. Accounting for 48% of all R&D output in the country, as well as 10% of the national GDP. Tswane is a canvas for creativity and academia with its seven research institutions and four universities reaffirming its status as the intellectual hub of not only the nation, but of the continent. And with world-class roads, a railway system and airport, as well as state-of-the-art telecommunication systems, it is a city ready to meet the future with both momentum and resolution. Coupled with these superlative achievements, the potential for growth and investment in Swane remains endless in sectors ranging from the green economy, tourism and agriculture to business process outsourcing and offshoring, the automotive industry, mining, aerospace and defense technologies, vibrant, dynamic, inclusive, resilient, progressive. These are the words that denote a city on the cusp of a revolution, on the precipice of unparalleled greatness. Invest in the future. Invest in a city with a vision like no other and embrace the rhythm of the one true heart of the nation, Swane.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For your group, you may be seated. Please take your seats. We will now have the parade fall out, and after the fall out, parade commander, we will request you just to do a short drill display.
Councillor Stevens Bukhalaba, Executive Mayor of Tswane. A leader who is determined to deliver services to the people of Tswane, and this is his top priority. He is also a leader that understands that sustainable service delivery requires a shift from traditional modes of delivery to ones that address the severe resource constraints we are encountering. A key driver of this shift to a sustainable city paradigm is the city's climate response strategy and the climate action plan currently being developed with support from the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group. By virtue of this strategy, by 2030, the city will have kept its emission levels below current emissions as it joins the global battle to protect the planet. It has also pledged to prepare adaptive responses to address climate impacts in each sector. The shift starts with low-hanging fruit, starting with the city's waste management practices, where the city is moving from landfilling to recycling, from inefficient buildings to green building design, construction and maintenance. The city is steadily shifting from fossil fuel sourced electricity to clean energy from single occupancy vehicles to mass public transport running on cleaner fuels. In fact, our vision is to become the electric vehicle capital of South Africa. The city constantly spreads the message that its activities should not harm this beautiful planet we have inherited. It vows to step up a gear as it protects its natural resources which provide an effective buffer from climate impacts. The city pledges to enhance and rehabilitate the natural environment 
and to take extraordinary measures to provide safe and tranquil open spaces for its residents' health and well-being. When the chips are down, it is the city's duty to protect the vulnerable from the harsh impacts of climate change and put measures in place to ensure that residents are water secure and protected from temperature rise. Our journey to becoming a climate resilient city is one founded on partnerships, research, knowledge sharing and private sector investment. Only through multi-sectoral partnerships can we accelerate and realize our vision of being a climate resilient city. We therefore pay tribute to all our partners and continue to welcome stakeholders that understand our challenges and wish to partner with us in solving these. City of Tswane, a city for now and the future. Testing one, two, three. Standing with me right now is the Deputy Chief of Emergency Services Department, Mr. Charles Mabaso, whom will also speak in depth about the parade that we've seen and also to talk to him about uh, the, the, the security within the city of Twane and also to hear if ever they have beefed up enough in terms of uh, protecting the address that is about to go, uh, that is about to happen with the Executive Mayor, Mr. Stevens Mokhalapa. Um, Mr. Charles, thank you so much for your time. If you can just take us through what we've seen the parade happening since 10 o'clock this morning can we in, in in fuller detail explain it to us as to what does it mean and also we've seen as uh, the executive mayor acknowledging uh, um, as they as they saluted him what else does what more does that also mean okay thank you uh, pal let me start by saying that the, the executive mayor is the commander-in-chief of all the uniformed staff in the city which includes your emergency services as well as metropolis as part of the community safety cluster so then the parade it's a show of discipline it's a show of organization in terms of execution of duty so this morning we saw how the forces were paraded earlier we started with the parade which included the motor gate which shows the force that is ready to offer services in the city between metropolis and emergency services well from emergency services side ours is more with safety i know that uh, community safety it's more looked in terms of security but then ours is more with safety safety in which terms in terms of the protection of life the environment as well as the property that is our core mandate but then we execute that mandate as part of a cluster which is community service so now this morning we saw a joint parade of the metropolis as well as the emergency services showing how disciplined they are showing that in the delivery of services one needs to be disciplined and as they paraded they then had to salute the mayor which we saw him acknowledging the salute part of the podium group that was with the mayor included the chief of emergency services the chief of police the mmc for community safety which is part of the cluster so this morning the force was shown 
that we are ready as emergency services to render a service, an excellent service, not just a service to the residents and community of the city of Tswani, making sure that we respond to all types of incidents, uh, starting from medical incidents, fire incidents, as well as accidents. So now the parade today has just shown that state of readiness. Well, for today also, in as much as we have deployed for the event, we also have got other resources that are on standby for the events outside the city. And now we have scaled down after the uh, parade and the uh, all our resources now are ready to respond to any incident should there be a need that we respond to incidents. So interestingly so, we saw quite a few gentlemen here whom I would say maybe did a guard of honor for the executive mayor dressed in a certain types of hats. If you can explain to us, is, is this usual with the emergency services? Do you usually have them for uh, such occasions or what is the purpose for them? Thank you. The, what you saw as part of the Guard of Honor, in fact, the parade itself, it's a ceremony. And you know, ceremonies are traditional. And emergency services, it's a very traditional and well-disciplined service. So the Guard of Honor that you saw there emanates from the tradition of the emergency service in terms of making sure that citizens are well protected. The brass helmets that you have seen have evolved since the founding of emergency services or fire brigade services as a service that started uh, as a voluntary service with members of the communities going out protecting the structures during earlier days in the 1800s or so. So we have carried that tradition with us and always are moving forward with it. And like I said in the beginning that the executive mayor is the commander in chief of all the uniformed people. So as they were parading and doing a guard of honor there, it was in terms of showing respect and showing discipline. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chief, for your time and everything that you have explained to us. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That is service delivery. And that is why I'm here wearing my overalls and boots. Because of I'm a mayor who wants to be on the street, in the grass, ensuring that we prune the trees, ensuring that we mark the roads, ensuring that we fix the street lights. People must see that Swani can be able to do some of the basic service delivery duties that we can do. So I am here to say, as team service delivery, team Swani service delivery, let us ensure that we go out in full numbers on the street and ensure that we put the main priority and focus being service delivered. So I am here with my team of MMCs to make sure that all achieve. And thank you to the, also the political leader, what councillors here for being here, because of we got to make sure that we show a unified, a unified you know, a progress moving forward. So I would want to say thank you for the work that you do. Working for, for municipality sometimes is a thankless job. Uh, one understand you know, the insurmountable work that is at hand for us, but it's doable and we must do it. So I am here to say, walk with me, march with me. I will lead from the front in terms of service delivery. Let us make sure that when we wake up in the morning in our homes and we come here to the city council offices, we come here on whose behalf are we here? If we are here on the behalf of the people of Region 5, of Kalinen, of Mfilu, then we are together. If you are here for yourself, then you are not with me. 
So I would want to say to you, thank you very much for coming out in numbers, motivate you to continue doing your work. Service delivery is the main, main priority, and it's the only thing that I would want to do. So the tagline moving forward, Mushumo Uchaba Diyad. How we gather?
you're all welcome. I also believe that, ladies and gentlemen, a hearty welcome and thanks to all of you to the days of May as the city of Swansea and the Twitter address 2019. Honorable counselors and guests, the student of the Twitter address, please be present for the city of Swansea as it covers not only the political and social economic state of the city, but also the development commitments of local government. The executive mayor will also highlight the current achievements and challenges and will suggest a way forward in addressing future imperatives in a partnership between the city of Swanee, the residents of Swanee, and all our stakeholders in the entertainment community, including business, churches, you know, social institutions, research institutions, all of them. This vital exercise gives expression to the theme of the state of the capital address, namely service delivery is not on your priority. And the concept of accountability and transparency, which are important cornerstones of your present day government. Please know that the speech will be distributed to councillors, traditional leaders, guests, and senior officials by making it available on the internet and on the city auction website immediately after it was delivered by the executive mayor. Lastly, I take it that all councillors have signed to this register for this meeting, and we do not please do so after the speech by the executive mayor. I will now move to the leave of absence. I will first give uh, you know, all the leave of absence that are approved by the chief will be submitted to my office directly and capture the minutes. So chief is not going to submit the absence. But I must announce that a lot of councillors are not here. We received messages from councillors from our mass crowd, Twitter, and social media, that some of them could not make it because of the shutdown. Before we proceed, Councillor Matapa, I wanted you. No, I think uh, the point that you raised now in your closing is the one that you are raising on the African National Congress. We, we were hoping that you were going to say something about the city being inflated. The city is burning and we can be here and see the inflation. So as the African National Congress, it is incumbent upon us that we leave the house and go and respond to the plight of the people. So our view is that if you have noticed, we have a caucus briefly and the caucus resolved that we cannot be part of this meeting going forward. We believe that uh, we should be with our people. We should be responding to their issues. And for us to come and sit here and listen to a speech, we do know that 80% of what will be containing the speech will not be achieved by the administration. We think it's for our as the African National Congress to excuse ourselves. So we just wanted to place it on record. But secondly, Mr. Speaker, before we leave, as the African National Congress, we always help our state of the city address outside of the city. And the reason that we did that was not for expedition purposes or just to be flamboyant. The inconvenience that we caused our motorists and our working community in the city is unbearable. And there is one major reason that made us not hold our state of the city address in the city. Hence, we always hold our state of the city address at Freedom Park or areas that are outside of the city decor. I think once the city that the man has spoken, he must apologize to the reason of the city of Swan. As much as we communicated that there will be interruptions, but I cannot explain the situation where roads are closed around the uh, Swanee House and all other major itinerant roads are left unattended by the Metro Police. Because it took me a, a, an hour and a half to drive from Steve Vigo to the CPG, and it's unacceptable. So when we are Metro Speaker, we just wanted to put it on record that as the African National Congress, we are going to leave this meeting. We are going to respond to our people, and we, we hope that the uh, Mayor of Chuan will not uh, be like the Mayor of Joe and blame the ANC when they are with the people and the DA prefers to call a press conference and address the plight of the people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Please proceed as a matter of final. Madam Speaker, the EFM is going to sit here and listen to to the speech. And one to inform our people of the fact that there is nothing genuine about what is happening in the township. That is the empty land family. It's the empty land family. And one to inform the speaker in the last forever, he must ask our people, George Nantina, 
which roles will be applicable as this is a special council sitting. So we are going to proceed whether or not we are a quorum because it's a special council sitting to hear the executive mayor addressing the people of Swan. So with that said, we are continuing with this meeting. <laughs> Honorable councillors, now item three is um, unopposed proposal by the speaker and there are none. And item four is the main item for the day, which is the executive mayor delivering the state of
are both at the launch of the book Making Africa Work. We got a former Nigerian president and former head of the shop for Ghana 
Ephesians chapter 2, we have to learn to avoid we have anything to do to do basic things right. Praise God. Looking back on these things that we have said ourselves, I cannot help but agree with President Bebezante Sekinis, who is the co-founder of the African Gene License. It is tempting to proclaim to possess the ability to fix everything at once. Such commitments often lead to failure. This is not to say that our administration neglects any aspect of governance, but simply affirms that setting the correct goals can often lead to positive spillover effects. Occasions such as this one, Madam Speaker, provide tempting ground for grandstanding and speaking only for of the positive strides that have been achieved during our tenure. However, as an administration, we have a committed to the principles guided by an honest and open and transparent government. This, therefore, requires us to embody every aspect of transparency. What this means, Madam Speaker, is where we have not reached desired outcomes, we will admit where we can zoom in and focus more resources in our, in our course, that which we have promised our people, we shall do so. Where more engagements are required to seek permanent solutions to the challenges inherited by this administration, such engagement shall happen. Madam Speaker, before I start to give an in-depth account of achievements and setbacks achieved, our five key strategic objectives. It will be remiss not to acknowledge the powering and the pioneering Professor Mashudu Chifularo, yes. an ear and nose and throat specialist at the Steve Vigo Academy Hospital. Professor Chifularo and his team at the University of Pretoria, which is my alma mater, recently performed the world's first middle ear transplant using 3D printed bones. To you, sir, and your team, we take our hats off to you and we salute you. Because <laughs> this groundbreaking surgery is no small feat. Likewise, all South Africans might take their hats off to Professor Chifuraro. This goes to show it is no coincidence that the city of Swani is home to the most number of universities in South Africa and many leading science and technology institutions known for their pioneering work. Excellence run in the city. Madam Speaker, flowing from the inspirational work of Professor Chifunaro, allow me to give an account of innovations and positive strides that this administration has taken in the past two and a half years. One of the biggest challenges that the people of South Africa deal with is bureaucracy and inaccessibility of leaders they have elected. Upon assuming office in 2016, the DA-led administration will notice the lack faced in dealing with public complaints and the frustrations meted out to people as a result of such. With our back to basics approach, we then committed to improving customer experience with our 24-hour one-stop instant customer care solution. It was introduced in 2016 and still continues to assist in increasing customer confidence in the city. One thing that was surely undermined by the previous administration prior to 2016 was treating citizens as customers and valuing their satisfaction. When citizens feel and see that they are cared for and that their needs matter, it is easier for them to acknowledge the importance of paying rates and taxes as they begin to get a real sense of what the funds are being used for. This is accountability. This has paved the way for the realization of a resident-centric city as the importance of engagement that can never be overly emphasized. It is the residents who know exactly what they need. They are the ones who have a first-hand account of what is beneficial or detrimental. Therefore, 
It is in the city's interest to maintain cordial relations with the residents from all walks of life. For I believe that our success in service delivery is in coordination and communication and partnership. In keeping with the technological advances in the fourth industrial economy and ensuring the accessibility of government to its people, the city has developed a number of valuable mobile applications such as Batupele and the Swani safety apps. We are working hard to perfect this method of communication and the strides taken beyond conceptualization thus far deserve recognition. We recognize that conventional methods of communication have been redundant to a vast number of our population and continuing to foster them will only work for the city's detriment. Social media platforms have been a preferred alternative to many. However, there remains a need for online platforms that are vetted by the city. For this reason, the creation of multiple mobile applications are instrumental achievements in customer care. Another positive that stems from those mobile applications is that they are available for download absolutely free of charge. Those who are interested in using these apps can download them by using our Wi-Fi from any of our 1,051 hotspots in all the seven regions of Tswane. Although the hotspots continue to have the challenges linked to connectivity, the city remains committed to providing efficient Wi-Fi solutions that are not to the detriment of business. Additional methods to expand the range will be explored during this financial year as we continue to place value on the accessibility of telecommunications and the internet. Access to connectivity is critical for the Tswani community and providing our citizens with access to information is a critical factor in upliftment within the city. A delicate balance is required in this instance and we are confident that we shall eventually strike it as we do not want to compromise business in our pursuit. Madam Speaker and fellow councillors, our compass on this road to a city that is rooted in service delivery and run without corrupt individuals at the helm are five key strategic objectives. These strategic objectives are the very embodiment of identifying a few things that must be done right. They have yielded the results that have far exceeded our expectations, albeit with challenges along the way. Our first strategic objective, a city that facilitates economic growth and job creation. Job creation in this country is at an all-time low. As we continue to churn out graduates faster than the system is able to absorb them. This can be blamed on numerous attributions on the lack of economic growth. The big question remains, on a city scale, what is our role and responsibility in absorbing job creation as one of our anchor goals and what strides have we taken in order to ensure that we deliver in this regard. We are serious about economic transformation in the city and creating the scope for the wider economic participation while creating sustainable jobs for the people in this city. In pursuit of economic transformation, the city is committed to the following priorities. One, developing clusters of activity in specialized centers and support emergence of new economic centers. Two, making investment simple and easy. Three, enabling informal trade. Four, supporting small and micro business to have a longer lifespan and increased turnover. Madam Speaker, allow me to elaborate on these points that I've just mentioned. I'm excited about the ongoing interventions into creating sustainable economic activity and jobs within the city. And I hope you all share in this joy. When we took office over in 2016, we made a promise that we would prioritize job creation. We set ourselves a target of 10 billion in investment, and I am happy to report that we have achieved 
66% at 6 billion. These numbers may not mean anything to some, but most importantly, they actually translate to jobs. The city has set itself a massive task of creating 104,000 jobs, and to date, it has managed to account for 60,000 jobs, which is another achievement of 67% of our target. But at Three million has been generated from one thousand one hundred and two billion. indeed worked hard to reach this destination. And now we are beginning to bear the fruits that stems to the financial indicators and ICT. Progressing from a deficit to a surplus in such a short period of time is unheard of. Yet we have achieved it and that not even the tip of why I'm elated to be talking about the finances of the city. An exciting revelation is with regards to the credit ratings. The city has maintained a rating of A1ZA from 2014 to 2017. And this was during the transition period between the previous administration and the now DA-led city administration in 2016. As of 2018, the rating was up to AA2ZA by Moody's Investor Services which is a favorable credit rating. The city has maintained its improved liquidity levels and shown vast improvements in its financial management. The double-notch credit rating from Moody's is pleasing as it illustrates that our stable commitment to a financially healthy city is beginning to yield fruits. An improved rating is not only for us to pat ourselves on the back 
but also yields positive long-term results for the city as it begins to become more desirable as an investment destination. Its attractiveness to both foreign and local investors. The benefits, one, the city has now greater ability to increase cost, which we so desperately require as a city. The city has an ability to roll out more infrastructure projects from savings realized in low-cost funding. The city has the ability to offer consumers affordable services tariffs through reduced cost of funding. Here we are able to spread our social safety net a little bit wider. Through our admirable finance management and successfully flowing out of financial incompetence, the city has generated a total of 4.7 billion since assuming office. This, Madam Speaker, are the fruitful results of doing a few things right. On SMEs, the city has undertaken a strategic position to support small and micro businesses. This is in order to sustain their lifespans and increase their turnover. Supporting small businesses is a national imperative with its own department. However, this does not exempt us as a city from developing goals that support such an imperative for the benefit of the people in the city. We are well aware of the earning potential of such businesses and the loss of courage to reach its full potential. So formal and informal serve as a source of vital employment in the city, in a country that continues to struggle to meet the demand of jobs. There are over 9 million unemployed people in South Africa, and us as a city must play our part. Madam Speaker, there are three businesses incubation programs that are currently operating, namely in Nelmepias in Region 6, in Atrejville Construction Incubation in Region 3, and Soshanguve Manufacturing and Technology Demonstration Sector in Region 1. The business incubation program enhances the competitiveness of emerging enterprises through the following interventions. Business and technical training, mentorship programs, operating business infrastructure, the facilitation of market access, the facilitation of access to finance and general support to improve compliance to regulatory requirements. In partnership with Small Enterprise Development Center, CEDA, the Economic Development Division operates seven business support centers across the city of Twani, in Olivonut Bosch, in Atrejville, Mabopani, Soshanguve, Amanskral, Mamulodi, and Bronkon Spread. These business support centers are providing support services to aspiring and existing entrepreneurs and are managed by experienced and qualified business advisors. Through these centers, a staggering 10,000 entrepreneurs have been supported, which represent 50% of our target. It may very well seem like a, I'm only enthusiastic here, but when we speak of 10,000 entrepreneurs, we are not talking about individuals only. The economic and social landscape of this country offers a secondary lenses that allow us to see that the impact of such support is felt by family members who benefit from these businesses. We may never know the actual impact of this support as to small business, but we are proud to play a role in assisting to foster their businesses. In providing mentorship and in support in a manner that will see them one day progress and affirm themselves into the economic trenches of the city. Supporting SMMEs is not a ceremonial activity. Develop systems to leverage procurement to SMMEs, and through our innovative high school program, FAP Lab, we are demonstrating further that we are a city that embraces technological advancement while planting the entrepreneurial seed in the minds of high school learners. FAP Lab currently benefits learners in grade 9 to 11 in the following areas, in Olivanut Bosch, in Atrejville, in Mamilodi, in Harankua, Mabopani, and Winterfeld. 
on the EPWP program. When we assumed office in 2016, we quickly realized that one of the most horrendously run program was the expanded public works program. At face value, it is designed to create job opportunities for qualifying communities members and offers a stipend in exchange for skills and on-job training. It is designed as a temporary solution whilst an individual seeks a long-term financial solution. An unpopular decision was taken by this administration that was to remove councillors and politicians from the running of the program. Their interference was severely compromising the efficiency of the program and beneficiary lists were constructed with political end goals in mind. I did say at the beginning of this administration was characterized by doing the impossible and that it, in this case was championing the needs of the people without expecting political favors in return. We realized that with the previous administration prior to 2016, this would have been a tall ask, but we govern with other opposition parties, and although not always easy, we always manage to put the needs of the people ahead of our own political differences. The open lottery EPWP selection system was created to ensure that even this office, my office, does not have undue influence into who benefits from this program. Beneficiaries are selected according to their age, gender, and their award. Their skill set is also considered when they are appointed, as certain jobs require some baseline skills. On our strategic objective number two, the city that cares for the residents and promotes inclusivity. Ours is a city of the haves living in close proximity with the have-nots. One such example is the Olivernot, Bosch, and Teshfield. By all accounts, both these communities are a sad reality. We have a responsibility to create more integrated communities for the sustainability of the city. Madam Speaker, our country is fascinating in this regard as we do not spend sufficient resources and time developing mechanisms that are location specific to deal with the challenges of the poor and to tackle abject poverty. Where these communities of people are located puts them at a severe disadvantage and as a city we are committed to adequately addressing their challenges and ensuring that they too begin to belong to the city that we know and love. This we have aimed to achieve by focusing our efforts in one, upgrading of informal settlements, two, supporting vulnerable residents, three, promoting safe, reliable, and affordable public transport, and improving access to public health care. We aim to eliminate any traces of us and them. This situation arises from the spatial setup in the city. We are all residents of Twani, and working towards an integrated community is guaranteed to instill a feeling of rightful belonging to everyone, an inclusive city. As at December 2018, Madam Speaker, 156 informal settlements have access to rudimentary water services. The city is working hard to ensure that rudimentary sanitation services to all informal settlements also increases. Our indigent program, it is in the light of this that we revised the indigent policy. It seemed as a bold decision at the time, especially considering the compromised financial state, but it was an important one. From the onset, to set a tone that affirmed the position on redress policies that will go a long way in fostering our desired culture of a city that promotes the values of inclusivity. Through the program, the households that are supported by the city receive a social package. The identified households benefit from assistance provided by the city for a period of 24 months. Following this period, a need alarmist is recovered in order to prevent undue beneficiation to residents who are financially stable. This 
social packages go a long way in the restoration of human dignity and ensuring that all who call our city home have access to basic amenities through the city's indigent policy. The benefits of such a program is that the households have access to the following. One, relief from rates and taxes, a 100% rebate on water, 12 kiloliter per month, electricity, 100 kilowatts per month, sanitation, 6 kiloliter per month, and waste removal, 100% rebate. This is the Swan social package. These are services that might still be taken for granted in many of the pockets of our city, but we truly understand that for the poor, accessing some of this and footing the bill for them is the difference between enjoying the benefits of these basic amenities and going to bed hungry. Notable gains has no doubt been made in redress and clearing services, delivering backlogs that are the legacy of our past. However, there are massive gaps in poverty alleviation that see some of our residents on the back foot still. The indigent program alleviates pressures on the poor and places it on the city. We have set ourselves a target of reaching 16,000 households and 10,000 households has been reached and this is an admirable 63% of the target that has been achieved. We are an administration that is willing to give a helping hand so that eventually no person goes to bed on an empty stomach in the city of Swani. However, this is not sustainable. As a city that cares, we also acknowledge that people with income earning opportunities often have a positive outlook on life. Thus, we utilize the EPWP program as an intervention to transition the recipients of the social benefit in an attempt to help restore their dignity. This we do not only aim to achieve through this program, but also through ensuring that beneficiaries are registered and eligible for the APWP recruitment strategy. The aim is for our people to self-sustain, but on their road to the self-sustenance, we are going to give them as much support as they require. We are indeed a caring city. This, again, is just one of the reasons why it is have been imperative to get the EPWP process right as it serves as a necessary source of temporary relief and a platform for soft skills that can give participants an edge in the competitive job market. Residents of indigent households are therefore prioritized and this will ensure that they leave the program and pave the way for other beneficiaries until we reach a point where such a program is rendered redundant. Because of the EPWP remains an important platform to provide work opportunities and skills development for many, I have instructed the city manager to explore and look at the best mechanisms to ensure that it is also support the city's indigent program. We are pleased with the strides that we have taken and beneficiaries have received additional assistance in the form of food and non-food parcels, such as toiletry tracks, blankets, and mattresses. A total of 18,000 beneficiaries received food parcels and a total of 56 non-governmental organizations and non-profit organizations received social assistance from the social relief program. I did say, Madam Speaker, that the aim of this is for everyone who calls this city home to never go to bed on an empty stomach. And by reaching out and offering assistance to NGOs, we are casting our net wider and giving relief to those who have committed to serving others while expecting nothing in return. The work done by the NGOs in the city is admirable, and we cannot thank them enough for their selflessness and commitment to the improvement of the lives of the economically vulnerable and disadvantaged communities. We will continue to contribute and assist however we can as these organizations do so much on their own without holding 
this administration runs on. On healthcare, Madam Speaker, tangible inclusivity requires accessibility to affordable healthcare facilities that are within a reasonable range of the poorest of the poor. According to the National Department of Health, Ideal Clinic Status Report, Swane came second in the Gauteng province with 86% of its facilities rated to be having or meeting the ideal status for clinics. We must move to number one. This is an assessment that focuses on infrastructure, adequate staff and medical supplies, administrative processes, clinical policies, protocols, and guidelines. Over the 2017 and 2018 financial year, the clinics recorded 1 million patient visits per annum. It shows the high volume. Successful strides have, however, been made in the healthcare sector, especially in relation to the HIV and AIDS, with the successful implementation of the 90-90-90 HIV AIDS TB strategy. And a total of 27,000 were initiated on antiviral ARVs treatment as part of this strategy. Our notable strides include the increase in the number of testing clients from 57,000 in 2015, 2016 to 78,000 and a decrease in the number of clients that tested positive from 18% in 2015, 2016 to 10% in 2017 and 2018. This indeed is a positive indication of a well-functioning system and an indication that stigmatization is on the decline. The TB rate also increased from 90 to 91%. We are hoping that we will reach the 100% quota soon and be able to save everyone who comes into contact with this deadly disease. On transport, Madam Speaker, transport plays a vital role in providing all citizens and visitors with access to opportunities and facilities. Whether for economic, educational, health, recreational or social purposes. We are painfully aware of the financial burden that stems from the reliance on our public transport system, and we are committed to ensuring that more alternative systems are developed to relieve the financial burden that emanates from transport costs. We acknowledge that scholar transport is a huge issue in many of the disadvantaged communities. TBS, Tuani Bus Service, has committed to introducing scholar transport to areas such as Melusi informal settlements. Furthermore, the city can report significant progress on the TRT with respect to the following. Line 1A, that is the Paul Kruger bypass road work has been completed and a practical completion certificate issued on the 28th of June, 2018. Two, a practical completion certificate for the Belo Ombri CNG depot was issued in June 2018. A contractor is being appointed for the Vonor Guom taxi holding facility. A progress with regard to line 2C on Watlu Road between Simon for Morten and Denobuom station is at 96% with expected completion on the 19th of April 2019. Our strategic objective number three, Madam Speaker, a city that delivers excellent services and protects the environment. Because of our past, services were rendered in skewed proportions that benefited the minority and barely managed to filter through to the majority of the people. It is important to mention this as it serves as a much needed reminder as to why we are where we are currently and why there remain vast backlogs in addressing basic service delivery challenges. Earlier on, Madam Speaker, I did say that service delivery was the only priority, and I mean every word of it. In addressing these service delivery challenges, the city will always bear in mind that it has obligation to the environment and that strategies that are developed and pursued must not compromise the environment in any way, in any way, shape, or form. 
energy conservation and the preservation of natural resources is an important and as important as service delivery to us. To illustrate our commitment to service delivery, the city has developed and implemented the integrated urban management framework. We are working towards a city that delivers, that at the same quality across all neighborhoods, and we believe that this reimagined approach to service delivery will assist us in achieving our goals. This approach has increased engagements between my office, the councillors, and the communities as solutions and suggestions suggestions were sought in order to tackle challenges and construct solutions for implementation. With that, in fact, I have introduced a template that each and every ward councillor will have that will show what is happening in their specific ward every single day in terms of event management framework. We have worked tirelessly to make some positive achievement in provision of water and sanitation. We have managed to do the following during the past financial year. 16,000 households have been connected to water that is fitted with the new meters. The city has set itself a target of 43,000 households and therefore needs to work harder to ensure that the remaining households are fitted as speedily as possible. There is still 26,000 more households to go, which means that currently we can only account for about 38% of the job. The new electoral connections were targeted at 40,000 households, and only 12,000 were electrified, again sitting on the 30% percentile. Although this is an addition to homes that have already been electrified, the city can do more and do better to meet its own target in this regard. Houses connected to sanitation also rest in the region of 33% as only 6,900 are fully sanitized out of a target of 20,000. The remaining households will be completed in the next two financial years. We can do much better. We can move the time frames and the targets quite closer. It's unacceptable. Our people should be living in dignity. Madam Speaker, the DA-led administration and its partners in governance are aware that these are dismal figures and that more effort is required to clear challenges that are contributing to the pace being contrary to what is desired. Our revised targets for the IDP 2019-2020 indicates that the city will be building a 211-kilometer stormwater drainage that will surely alleviate some of the pressure of the system. Road construction to the tune of 183 kilometers are currently being built and in addressing the public transport issue alluded to earlier. It is a pleasure that 17 kilometers in the form of the TRT busway lanes are currently under construction and earmarked for completion in the next financial year. We are a city that cares for the environment. Our environment continues to take out emissions and irresponsible use of scarce resources. And we are committed in exploring options that are positive for our city. In rolling out of electricity meters, we aim to cap the loss of electricity by 10%. This can be considered a double benefit as it assists the residents and also ensure that the city is not only stating its commitment to the conservation of the environment, it is actually taking steps towards ensuring that it happens. Critical achievements with regards to nature preservation, conserving the environment, are that the city was selected as a pilot in the National Treasury's mainstreaming climate change responsiveness into BEPP projects. It is an honor to be chosen for such as the city has employed numerous strategies such as Earth Hour, the Tswani Green Ride, Car Free Day, the Tswani Green Pitch, that are currently employed in the city and get the, at creating an environmentally friendly attitude. In our efforts to ensure a sustainable city, a month ago we hosted a Ikasi ride in which we opened the first container of its kind for bike maintenance materials in Winterfeld. We have further launched the two projects being funded by the C40 CFF program, that is 
the establishment of wastewater to energy generation at the Sikwihat Wastewater Treatment Works and a non-motorized transportation in Solomon Matangu Road. This is a commitment to the sustainability of our environment in our city. Our strategic objective for a city that keeps its residents safe. When we think of safety, we often have crime in our minds and the annual statistics do very little to reassure us. As leaders, however, when we speak about the safety of our citizens, we are forced to look beyond the norm and think about security measures that are beyond what can be provided by law enforcement agencies. I'm talking about safety from natural and also, at times, man-made disasters. How safe is our city from such and how ready are we to tackle small or large-scale incidents? This requires accessibility to emergency services and due to the spatial dispensation of the country and the city and the large-scale communities that are located far from such services and the most unfortunate part is that it is often communities that are informal in nature and are prone to fires. It is for this reason that I take pleasure in announcing that the construction of the fire station in Mamelodi is complete for stage one to three. <clears throat> Bringing services closer to the people improves response time and decreases fatalities that results from prolonged waiting periods. The city recently completed the Yevel Ord fire station and it is now fully operational whilst a feasibility study has been completed in relation to the fire station at Grace Fontaine. Lack of disaster management and adequate mitigation strategies is a serious threat to the lives of the people in the city. On crime, now in relation to what we consider a threat to our safety, which is crime, the city of Swan is considered to be one of the safest metropolitans in the country. Over the last year, we have conducted over 2,100 road policing interventions and 3,300 different crime prevention operations to improve safety. Madam Speaker, the city is innovative in its composition and dedication to assisting residents in a manner that they find most convenient and cost effective. We are adamant that seeking help should never be an expensive exercise, and that is one of the reasons that we have paved the way for the development of the safety app. If used correctly, this app can usher in a new method of police collaborating with the public in order to successfully combat crime and keep the streets of this city safe. The app provides a platform where members of the public can anonymously report crime and corruption without any imminent threats for their lives. The Swanee Metropolitan Department will benefit from a system that will give them a bird-eyed view of the city. In this financial year, the allocation of 18 million for CCTV cameras has been made available. The resources are needed to back up our declaration of war on criminal activities across the city. Madam Speaker, our strategic objective five, a city that is open, honest, and responsive. When the change of government occurred in 2016, it was a loud signal that the people were no longer going to sit back and tolerate the rampant corruption that was once characterized this city. A whistleblower hotline has been established to be managed independently so that there is also an avenue to ensure that corrupt and fraudulent behavior can be reported without victimization. Fighting corruption requires one to put measures in place for early detection of irregularities. But training staff so they are fully capacitated and know exactly what corruption is and what punitive measures should be taken for any individual that is found to be involved in any corrupt activities is equally important. Fraud has been identified as the biggest contributor to the prevalence of corruption. Therefore, giving way for the flouting of supply chain regulations 
that ultimately leads to the looting of the state coffers. One thing that this administration has managed to successfully do is setting up the following to combat corruption. The one, fraud prevention program. Two, the fraud detection program. And three, investigate allegations of fraud, corruption, and maladministration. This needs agent consequence management. It's nothing to investigate, it's something to prosecute. And my view moving forward is there shall be prosecutions. <laughs> camping, camping rampant corruption has characterized the city in the past years and has required a systematic approach. The creation of systems, however, will not be effective in stamping out corruption if the city does not effectively deal with supply chain management challenges. Madam Speaker, allow me to go to the supply chain management challenges. We are still plucked with poor contract management and this negatively impacts our ability to deliver services timelessly. In order to mitigate these challenges, we have committed to the implementation and enforcement of a robust contract management system. In the process, embarking on capacitating the management unit so that they are skilled sufficiently to execute this system. We are acutely aware of the delays in the appointment of service providers and are working on ensuring that supply chain and value chain management system are optimized for the benefit of our people. Failure to appoint contractors impacts on deadlines and compromise our ability to deliver, and that which is needed by the city when it is needed. It is for this reason that we will be leveraging ICT systems to improve supply chain management, e-procurement. Tracking systems are vulnerable in identifying gaps and delays, and this will surely assist us in improving our turnaround time in this regard. The entire supply chain unit has been placed under administration, and efforts are on track to overhaul the entire division. Last week, I have signed the microstructure and the job forum will be going out this weekend. Madam Speaker, we are not an administration of slogans and empty promises, but one that is brutally honest and it's with its shortcomings and proactive in seeking long-term solutions that will leave the city and its people in good state. This is the commitment we make to the people of Tswane, that by the end of this first tenor, the city will be in far more favorable position than that one we have found in, in 2016. I stand here rest assured that when I return to address this house in a year's time, I will be able to revert back on the positive strides taken within the supply chain unit because we stand firm that change will happen and efficiency is guaranteed to be the order of the day moving forward. We remain an administration that is honest and accessible. We are not only here to reiterate our commitment to our values of freedom, fairness, and access to opportunities, but also to prove through our relentless efforts that this is what we aim to achieve. We are committed to eradicating this system failures and challenges, and through ongoing capacity building trainings, we are going to rein in on performance management. Giving support to our managers and capacitating them puts us in an optimal position to develop more results-orientated performance management system and begin to instill the consequence management. The ripple effect of managers that are underperforming is crippling this city. And only through capacity building can performance management assume a new accountability structure that will not tolerate underperformance as it has negatively impacted on our supply chain management processes and undermines the city's ability to achieve its targets on time. Moving forward, all senior managers are signing performance agreements that are linked to service delivery targets. 
No one will receive a bonus on electricity while the city is stuck. No one will receive a performance bonus when the grass is not cut. This is what we mean and this is what we will do. So where from here? I have reported for over the two and a half years that we have been in office. Where to from here? My vision for the city is getting the city to do the basics right. Fix the postholes, cut the grass, mark the roads, switch on the street lights. That is the order of the day. Nothing more, nothing less. A city should be able to do its key functional service delivery. Two, the municipal officials must serve this city with humility, integrity, and trust, and professionalism, and serve our people, not political interest or self-interest. The economy of the city must boom and create investment so that we can create much needed jobs. We must have a safe city where our children, our women and girls can walk freely at night without being victimized. Lastly, a city cannot do it on its own. We need to build strong partnerships with our communities and the business sector. Madam Speaker and fellow councillors, I have reflected at length about what has transpired in the past two and a half years, and now it is important to reaffirm that whilst the baton has exchanged hands, the course remains the same and the ideals firmly safeguard for the benefit of the people of the city and in the interest of continuation. Going forward, this administration will focus on these five key priorities. One, refocusing the administration. Two, accelerated service delivery. Three, creating an environment for job creation. Four, rooting out corruption. And five, keeping Tswani safe. Let us start with refocusing the administration. The city aims to employ a number of strategies that will ensure that we lead to the stabilization of our administration and ensure that we achieve institutional transformation. A culture of shift, a culture of change has happened within this institution. It's a paradigm shift moment. Firstly, performance management. In our efforts to refocus the administration, the first priority is to get our house in order and performance is at the center of stabilizing this administration. The IDP and the service delivery targets will be linked to performance bonuses. What I mean by this, fellow councillors, is like I said, we cannot give a bonus to a director of electricity while the city remains dark. Gone are the days where officials get bonuses while residents are not getting services. Yeah. Accountability. To take this further, I affirm that all the 28,000 officials will have to work for their salaries or simply go home. Since I have come into office, I have asked Council to support me in establishing the Financial Disciplinary Board. This is to investigate financial misconduct while we put in place an effective disciplinary processes there will be a system of consequence management so that we are able to deal with the officials that are not doing what they are supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I had a meeting with the Auditor General yesterday who implored on me that the issue of consequence management should be a priority in this city. Yeah. For far too long, this city it didn't have consequence management. It stops here, it stops right now. The city requires an honest, professional, 
civil servants to serve the people of Swani, not self-interested. Madam Speaker, we need public servants who know and understand that their contract is with the people of Swani. On our expenditure, I must say that I will not incur irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure under my administration. It can never be. I have served for 10 years in Parliament fighting departments about irregular expenditure, and it's not going to happen in my watch in my city. The days of irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditures are gone. Consequence management must happen. Going forward, only projects that are at the implementation stage will be budgeted for. No, no project that is being planned for, no budget. It's as simple as that. We cannot have fiscal dumping in this city. Revenue generation. Through the signing of an MOU with Sunparks to manage the city's results, it is yet another step in generating income and the clean financial management. It is such financial lucid decisions that have created the desirable image of the city and led to the drafting of the tourism and event strategy that will further optimize the city's brand. It is important, Madam Speaker, that all the affording residents of the city pay for their services. It is against this background that we will be instilling prepaid meters to those informal settlements that have illegally connected to our formal grids. This will help us increase our revenue, which we will plow back providing world-class services. On automation, nothing can be done in the absence of efficient administration. And this is an aspect that has been undervalued. Accounting structures and punitive measures for failure to execute duties sufficiently have not been stressed enough. Instability, therefore, stems from this lack of accountability and negatively impacts the city's ability to fulfill its mandate. Through continuous engagement session with residents and seeking solutions to encourage them to begin to view themselves as part and parcel of what the city is able to do and achieve has yielded positive results. We remain firm in our bid for inclusivity and are beginning to see the fruits in a more efficient administration that is not without challenges, but one that enjoys the trust and encouragement of the people that is so diligently serves. The future is indeed beginning to look promising as we stream roll ahead. These measures will include, one, establishing professional and effective governance processes, which we will be inclusive of people, connectivity, process, and system. Secondly, regularly hosting feedback meetings in all communities in order to report to residents on the work that is being done by the city. Lastly, prioritizing public process to listen to community members regarding decisions that impact them, which is one of the main roles and responsibilities of local government. The city is accountable to the residents that reside in it and should therefore always seek to keep them informed, engage them, and continue to create platforms that encourage open dialogue, such as these feedback sessions, and the use of social media platforms. Dismantling bureaucracy is what we aim to achieve. From red tape to red carpet. The accelerated service delivery program. Madam Speaker, service delivery remains our ultimate priority, our only priority. As I have mentioned before, because it is the sole purpose of this administration. Now we have been bold enough to admit that there have been challenges in ensuring that the facilitation of service delivery happens in a speedy manner and that one that ensures that is reflective of the city's intention to promote values of inclusivity. Through the advancement towards communities that are now sharing resources and fostering a culture of neighborliness, the city is committed to ensuring that the same quality of services are accessible to those and all those who are affluent and also to those who are economically and socially marginalized. 
The standardization of service delivery is an aspect that we pride ourselves in and one that we are going to continue to work at perfecting. We realize that it will take rigorous efforts and redesign the city so that we begin to bring to the fore those who previously could not access basic amenities. To that effect, that template that I have designed of uh, service delivery will make sure that I rock up at every word in un un unannounced. I have told the RDs that moving forward, I will be having that template. If it tells me that there will be grass cutting between Ataberi and Solomon Matangu Road, I go there and stand there and say, I'm here. Why is grass cutting not happening today? Economic development. Madam Speaker, whether investors take interest in our city depends mainly on how our inner city looks. It is a reflection of ourselves. This therefore places inner city regeneration at the center of economic development and subsequent job creation. Marawastad and inner city informal traders will be the main beneficiaries of the 25 million in the draft IDP. We are currently developing a local economic development strategy for SMME support. This will go a long way in providing the much needed support for SMMEs. On job creation, when we assumed office, the city was in no position to attract investors for the purpose of job creation. And that was attributed to our bleak financial status. However, job creation remains a necessary a necessity and the onus was solely upon us to create an environment that will be conducive to such. As mentioned before, we want to exist in a city where no one goes to bed on an empty stomach, and this requires us to create an environment that can generate jobs and support entrepreneurial endeavors. We are committed to creating a conducive environment by implementing a number of positive turnaround strategies that will place the city in a positive light. Having offloaded buildings that were fast becoming breeding grounds for crime and overcrowding, we are positive that the new owners will refurbish them in a manner that will beautify our city, eliminate criminal activities that has manifested in them and contribute to the creation of affordable housing solutions. We acknowledge that nobody wants to invest or plow money into a city that is run down. And that is why we are focusing so much attention and efforts into ensuring that our city never again falls prey to dilapidated buildings. Although this is a provincial imperative, we are committed to playing our role as it will surely yield positive economic outcomes. Another hindrance to the creation of jobs is the prevalence of dubious economic activities and the flouting of bylaws. Through our numerous engagement sessions with the public, we are reiterating the importance of observing bylaws and how they are designed for the benefit of businesses and not a mechanism to stifle them. We will be working closely with the Tswani Metropolitan Department and affording them adequate resources to tackle this pandemic. To date, there have been 819 operations in the city, and this is the helpful as it leads to increased visibility. We can do more. We have also set up an inner city multiplinary task team meetings that afford us opportunity to tackle the problem from all possible angles. These efforts contribute to a safer city and cannot be overly emphasized. Safe cities attract investment in as much as unqualified audit reports do. The combination of these two have placed us in a positive footing and it is my wish that we surpass the target of generation of six billion in investment over the next two years as this will mean we are able to create more jobs and further support entrepreneurial activities. In the past month, we have received three billion investment from Ford Company and a further three billion from Nissan Company, creating about 1,200 jobs. We want to be a city that does business with the people that it serves, and this will be achieved by perfecting the supply chain management processes and ensuring that the procurement systems are not discriminatory to the SMMEs. The city remains on course for economic and spatial planning and will be plowing funds for this to happen. We will continue to be guided by the capital investment framework 
whose purpose is to close the gap between the spatial strategy and implementation on the ground. This can be achieved by using the spatial strategy and the detail provided in the regional spatial development frameworks as the basis on which other sector plans can place their plans, thus ensuring integration through a shared platform. The CIF has been instrumental in assisting us to identify priority nodes with unique character and potential to contribute to achieve the set objectives for spatial integration. The nodes are subdivided into the following regions. The northern, which is comprised of the Hamaskral and the Babelehi nodes, the northwest, which is comprised of Roslin and the Vonerboom area nodes, the southeast, which is made up of Menlane, Watlu, Silverton, and Mamelod and Estres, the south, which consists of Sunderland Ridge, Manavoni, and Olivon and Bosch. The remaining nodes are the central west, central core, and the far east, and they all play a vital role in spatial dispensation of the city. Guided by the CIF, funds will be allocated to the following nodes. The inner city regeneration, the civic and northern gateway precincts for 9.7 million, the Rosalind urban realm upgrade and multimodal interchange for 26 million, the Maravastat informal traders 8 million, the informal traders in the inner city for 17 million. On waste and agriculture management, we are a capital city, and for this reason, Waste removal is thus crucial. It is against this background that in the draft IDP we allocated 9.2 million for the provision of waste containers, development of wastewater transfer station, landfill site, and waste recycling site. Our city remains to be dirty. I am quite concerned about the level of waste recycling that happened at every street corner of this city. That must also come to a stop. We need to put uh, the waste recyclers and have them in dedicated land so that they can do waste. It can never be that every corner of our city is a waste recycling depot. So I would implore that the environment and the metropolis do their due diligence in bylaw enforcement. During the youth summit, I was confronted by my home girl from Winterfeld to my admir admiration. She is a farmer. And since that meeting, I vowed to develop a program that speaks to this important sector of our society. I will make an announcement in this regard into how we're going to assist with agriculture and our agri-villages. Madam Speaker, I'm happy to announce that the city from henceforth will provide internship for students as part of the department's KPIs. It's very important that we provide internship. We can't be a city that has got the most student population and most universities, but we don't provide internship. So it will be part of the KPIs of departments. <laughs> On housing and human settlements. Through human settlement programs and the production of affordable alternative living solutions, we are bringing people closer to their jobs cutting traveling time and, in essence, putting the money spent on traveling costs back in their pockets. I will be launching a project called Blitzema for formalization of informal settlement. In this financial year, we will spend $305 million on upgrading of informal settlements. We recommit our partnership with the Gauteng Human Settlement in the Rama City project. This is an important mega city project for the city, as thousands of our residents will have their own homes. During the adjustment budget, we also allocated 112 million for land acquisition. This, Madam Speaker, will go a long way in alleviating land invasion, but most importantly, giving our people access to land and dignity. The essence of Lizema task team is to focus the informal settlements budget into one budget. This, Madam Speaker, will concentrate the interdepartmental functions into one unit that deals mainly with anything that has to do with informal settlements. This will ensure that we deal with the sporadic informal settlements once and for all. We are a socially conscious administration 
and we understand fully the positive spillover effects that stems from close proximity of schools and amenities. We realize that service delivery is about long-term impact and fostering real inclusivity in the city. And that is why our social spending for the next financial year is reflective of this. In the period 2019-20, the city will set out to achieve the following in relation to human settlements, which remain an important redress imperative. The project linked housing water provision of 317 million, the sewerage low-cost housing at 279 million, roads and storm water, low-cost housing, 247 million, redevelopment of hostels, 20 million, especially the Salisville, redevelopment of hostels, Mamelodi, 20 million, construction of roads and storm water at Zito Beni Hostel for 20 million, acquisition of land for formalization of informal settlement at 112 million. On electricity, Madam Speaker, we cannot overemphasize the need to mitigate against the crisis of load shedding. This is why I intend to explore the option of getting the city to source electricity from independent power producers. I have already written a letter to the Minister of Energy to get that dispensation. This, Madam Speaker, will go a long way in rescuing our economy and positioning Tswani as an investment hub. Fellow councillors, most crimes committed in the city happens in the dark. It is for this reason that we will push for 97 million on the Swane public lighting program in the 2019-20 IDP. All residents have an essential responsibility of paying for services. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of revenue collection. It is for this reason, fellow councillors, that I implore you to support the draft IDP on the 42 million for installation of prepaid meters, electricity meters. It is better for us to install prepaid meters than to have loss of revenue and illegal connections. On water, it is no secret that we inherited an administration in 2016 that contaminated our streams and dams. Over and above what we did in the past two and a half years, the need to replace, upgrade, and construct waste water treatment work facilities remain relevant. That's why, Madam Speaker, we have allocated 175 million in this regard and 80 million for replacement of worn out network pipes in the draft IDP. <laughs> On energy, it is with excitement, Madam Speaker, that I announce that we have called for proposal, request for proposals on upgrading of the rival power plant, and as well as the conversion of the waste to energy in the Pretoria West power stations. This we did, fellow councillors, because we recognize and appreciate the reality that Swane alone will not be able to resolve the service delivery backlog. Hence, we revert to the public-private partnership. On community and social development, we are aware of the lack of sports and recreational facilities. These amenities are either inaccessible or not available in working towards improving this. The availability of facilities contributes immensely in harnessing the talents of gifted young people who are unable to pay for formal training facilities. This also, and it also assists in addressing social ills that occupy many idling minds. In adopting a holistic approach to fostering a culture of sports, healthy bodies, and active minds, we will be allocating 18 million towards the Refilway Stadium upgrade and a further 20 million for the greening of sports fields. It is high time for our communities to have access to sports facilities so that we begin to move away from this narrative of discovering talent on dusty streets, but rather create a local conducive environment where talents can be harnessed. By occupying young minds, we are hoping for a positive spillover effect and a reduction in crime and drug use. I did say that multiple options are being explored to rid the city of the prevalence of drug use, and this, we hope, will yield a positive impact. On health, fellow councillors, a healthy nation is a nation, working nation, and therefore, access to public health facilities is critical in this regard. 
I urge you, fellow councillors, to support the draft IDP in channeling the 11 million to the new Lusaka Clinic and 11 million to the new Roslyn Clinic. We are also investigating the new 24-hour access to clinic, as you will agree, Madam Speaker, that our hospital sometimes struggle to carry the load. So for our TFF friends, we are looking at investigating the possibility of having 24-hour clinic. Currently, there are five, three from the province and two from Tswane. Community safety. The safety of our residents cannot take a backseat when it comes to budgeting. This is why we have put aside 44 million for the Mamilodi fire station. On transport, Madam Speaker, please support the allocation of 22 million to the Mabopani station nodal interchange, the 23 million on internal roads in the northern areas of our city, the 460 million on the BRT transport infrastructure and extension of the BRT to Mamilodi and Atrejvul. Madam Speaker, allow me to make this announcement. We have taken a deliberate decision to build the in-house capacity with the establishment of the in-house asset protection unit, which aims to hire 3,000 security guards. This will ensure that we protect our assets against theft and vandalism. As much as I would love to take credit, but this has to be attributed to the EFF councillors. <laughs> On the shared services, Madam Speaker, a functional city should be able to provide basic services to its residents without over-relying on external service providers. It is for this reason that in the past two and a half years, we have purchased over 100 vehicles. These vehicles were handed over to the regions as the frontliners of service delivery. It is in this same spirit that we have opted to allocate over 660 million rents for the purchase of new vehicles in the draft IDP in our efforts to capacitate the regions in-house. Madam Speaker, allow me to reflect on the 50 days of achievements in my office. In these times of hopelessness, it is easy to listen to the commitments that I have just pronounced and hear nothing but words, words and more words. So why should the people of Swane believe me when I say we are intentional about service delivery? I confidently wish to point out to the people of Swani, to my track record, in just under 60 days in office, I have delivered on all the promises I've made in my inaugural speech. When I make commitments, I deliver them. Yeah. The first commitment was the cancellation of the Dread Africa Consultancy Agreement. As of 20 March 2019, and I have also referred the Dled Africa Irregular Expenditure to the Audit and Performance Committee for investigation. Secondly, approval of the policy on organizational performance. Thirdly, the establishment of the Strategic Investment Committee to assist with the streamlining support for investors. Fourthly, establishment of the asset protection unit to guard the city's infrastructure from theft and vandalism. Fifthly, establishment of the financial disciplinary board to address consequence management in the city. Sixth, and most important, the release of two buildings, Melchizedek and Kruger Park for student accommodation. <laughs> Seventh, approval of the industrial, Silverton Industrial Park for Fort Investment for the tune of 3.8 billion, creating about 7,500 jobs. <laughs> Eighth, the launch of Muneta 2021-30, a program aimed for youth development. Ninth, 
I have put a system of sustainable accelerated service delivery in the regions. And lastly, decided on the way forward on what to happen with the so-called Centurion Lake. This proves that I'm a man of my weight. I'm a man of action. Let's talk more action. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we cannot do it alone. We do not only want to rely on high-level structures and the budget in order to improve our city and make it the pride of its residents. We want to begin to instill a culture of pride, collaboration, and proactiveness. We are aware of our limitation and that only so much can be achieved without working closely with our stakeholders in and around this beautiful city. This means that we need to strengthen and intensify the partnerships and where an opportunity arises, create new ones that will foster greater relations between the city and those who reside in it. Through working with our councillors, we want to ensure that the city continues to develop, to deliver excellence at what level, and that through continuous engagement at meeting structures on the ground, we will be able to set out strategies to best to serve our communities. It is only through working closely with councillors that we can ensure that war rooms are fully functional and equipped to deal with individual community needs. Councillors are also instrumental in disaster management related matters as they are the first option point of contact between affected parties and access to relief. There are other benefits that could stem from this relationship and we look forward to exploiting them. Our bid to beautify the city and create affordable living space for those who were especially previously disadvantaged, we are working on low-cost housing and refurbishing building with the city, as, a pre as previously mentioned. However, we would appreciate assistance from business in the property sector. We are appealing to them to assist in addressing the human settlement challenges in the city in any way. Businesses are often an invaluable source of resources and human capital, and the city would appreciate entry into some of those resources for the benefit of our people. It has to be understood that assisting government only serves as a positive influence to the people of our country. If we gain entry to alternative building solutions or modern day spatial usage, we will be able to greater position to eradicate some of the challenges we are currently facing in relation to human settlement. Communities and civil societies can assist greatly with regard to accountability. It is often through community engagement and whistleblowers that cases of corruption are uncovered and dealt with. It is also through community that areas of consent are identified which make their way to the city's business plan in order to be addressed. In this regard, the role of active communities cannot be overstressed enough and we will work to continue towards strengthening them for the benefit of the city. There is a speedy idiom, a speedy idiom uh, that speak of the importance of teamwork and the negative effects of failing to work together. In their wisdom, the African elders used the idiom and they used the lion, a symbol of power to articulate this point. Yeah. It is basically means that regardless of their power and strength, if the pride of lions lack that spirit of working as a team, then they will fail to bring down a seriously hurt and limping buffalo. In a team, everyone has a role to play their part, not only through words, but also through action. Let us all, the role players, play our part in fighting corruption, creating jobs, and delivering better services to the people of Tswane. I am Tswane. Through our new campaign, I am Tswane, we aim to make the city more accessible and relatable to all who call it home. The city does not belong to me as the mayor, and it certainly does not only belong to officials and administrators, it belongs to all of us as residents of the city. Tswane belongs to all who resides within her borders and call her home. We want all the above mentioned stakeholders to join us in this campaign that seeks to change the perception on the identity of the city 
those who are capable of instilling change. It is the responsibility of all those who reside in the city to play a role in this betterment. Our role in government can be to create platforms such as the emergency city number of 107 and the apps that have been mentioned previously. But it is our people that must utilize these mechanisms and drive us to a better place. Through this campaign, we want residents of the city and businesses to begin to take ownership of the city and realize that much can be done, achieved through their endorsement and collaboration. We need for them to begin to understand that whatever role they play has an impact. Reporting a crime has an impact. It brings victims closure to justice and assists police in cleaning up our streets and reading acts of criminal elements. Owning memorabilia identifies one with the city. It creates curiosity for those who might have there never been to the city and ultimately might have a positive impact on service delivery. My priority as the executive mayor remains solely on service delivery. That is how I am Tswane. Madam Speaker, allow me to quote from the Good News book, Proverbs 14, chapter 23, which says, and I quote, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. It is, it is in the spirit of this verse that I invoke the wisdom of my forebearers in a sepedi idiom. Moshomo Ochawa Diak. Meaning, the more hands, better are the chances of success. I stand before you as a humble son of the city, optimistic about the future of the city of Swani and committed to fight corruption, creating jobs and delivering services. I stand here and wish to encourage everyone to play their role because in this city, that is what we are. We are a resilient people. We are a solution-seeking people, and we possess enough talents and skills to steer this city into greater heights. For that to open, we have to own our individual roles in order to, for every person in our greatness to radiate and affect the lives of others. Madam Speaker, let me from the very deepest part of my heart thank our coalition partners and express sincere gratitude in the same spirit. I want to reemphasize that ours is less about, more about the residents of the capital city. In my role as mayor, I stand committed to being Tswane. I am Tswane, and so are all of you. And I appeal to each and every person listen to just play, to just not listen, but play their role. Claim their stake in the city and effect positive change. In the main, it's about the people of Swan. It's about service delivery. It's about Mushomo Uchawa Diak. Thank you very much. Paya Danke. Thank you very much, Honorable Councillors. Uh, Executive Mayor, I think it will be appropriate for me to say Amen. Really, so shall it be. Indeed, so shall it be. Honorable Councillors and distinguished guests, let me thank the Executive Mayor for what I think was a very insightful and stimulating address, an honest assessment of the state of our city, and an inspiring way forward to address the city's future developmental imperatives. Thank you very much, Executive Mayor. We are truly inspired. 
Secondly, honorable uh, councillors, in terms of the approved council calendar, the debate on the state of the capital address will take place at the ordinary council meeting pre-scheduled for Thursday, the 25th of April 2019. It is all included on the approved council calendar. So the debate will be held in the next ordinary sitting of council. And honorable councillors, let me just clarify something so that we can put this on record. At the beginning of the meeting, the number of councillors was 122. Thus, we did have a quorum and the meeting was truly duly constituted. Thereafter, I officially opened the meeting and declared the order of business as envisaged in section eight of the rules and orders. However, after Councillor Matafa addressed council, the ANC councillors left council and the quorum of the meeting was affected in that the number of councillors that remained in the council chamber were only 102 councillors and we need 108 to form a quorum. Honorable councillors, though no one has brought to my attention the number of members present in terms of section five of the rules and orders bylaws, I deemed, it, uh, I deemed it necessary to put it on record that the quorum of the meeting was affected by the working out of the ANC caucus. Having made consideration of the logistics involved in preparing for this meeting and our invited guests who are here who honored the invite, as well as accountability to our citizens, I allowed the meeting to proceed irrespective of the non curation in making this decision, I considered, amongst others, the fact that this is not a decision-making meeting, but accountability by the executive mayor to the citizens of Twain. And as such, that is what I'm saying even, there is no need even for the, uh, anyone to move that a debate be done in the next sitting of council because it is stipulated in the approved council calendar. I have also applied the provision of section eight, Section 8, subsection 3 of the Rules and Orders Bylaw, which provide the Speaker with a wide discretion in relation to the applicability of provisions of the Rules and Orders during a special and or extraordinary meeting of Council. And this meeting falls under the category of a special meeting, and I have allowed it to proceed for reasons I have outlined. I thought it is necessary to explain that to council and to also put it on record as to what has transpired. Honorable councillors, now please allow me to do the closing remarks because we received the address by the executive mayor. Let me make the following announcements to make sure that our honorable guests will know where to get their saving points and also that there will be ushers to usher them there. All councillors, senior officials, and council administrative staff members, and members of the media, the relevant service providers, must kindly remain seated to allow the speaker, the executive mayor, members of the mayoral committee, the chief of council, the chair of chairs, chairperson of section 79 committees, our traditional leaders and the enterprises, and all guests to move to the applicable saving points for lunch, Ashes will direct us accordingly. Thereafter, all councillors, senior officials, council administrative staff, members of the media, and the relevant service providers will proceed to the applicable saving points for lunch, and also ushers will direct you accordingly. The media interviews and interaction with individual councillors will take place during this time. Honorable councillors and guests, I respectfully request that we all adhere to these arrangements in order to avoid unnecessary confusions. Honorable councillors and distinguished guests, I thank you for attending this meeting and let me take this opportunity also to thank the Almighty God for his protection and we continue to pray to him to please bless our country, our city and our lovely continent of Africa. With those few words, this meeting is officially concluded. I thank you all. All councillors are supposed to remain seated.
until the executive mayor, the MMCs and the chairpersons have left the chamber and the traditional leaders. Please. Earth Hour 2019, time to shift. Councillor Stevens Bukhalaba, Executive Mayor of Tswane. A leader who is determined to deliver services to the people of Tswane, and this is his top priority. He is also a leader that understands that sustainable service delivery requires a shift from traditional modes of delivery to ones that address the severe resource constraints we are encountering. A key driver of this shift to a sustainable city paradigm is the city's climate response strategy and the climate action plan currently being developed with support from the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group. By virtue of this strategy, by 2030, the city will have kept its emission levels below current emissions as it joins the global battle to protect the planet. It has also pledged to prepare adaptive responses to address climate impacts in each sector. The shift starts with low-hanging fruit, starting with the city's waste management practices, where the city is moving from landfilling to recycling, from inefficient buildings to green building design, construction and maintenance. The city is steadily shifting from fossil fuel sourced electricity to clean energy, from single occupancy vehicles to mass public transport running on cleaner fuels. In fact, our vision is to become the electric vehicle capital of South Africa. The city constantly spreads the message that its activities should not harm this beautiful planet we have inherited. It vows to step up a gear as it protects its natural resources which provide an effective buffer from climate impacts. The city pledges to enhance and rehabilitate the natural environment and to take extraordinary measures to provide safe and tranquil open spaces for its residents' health and well-being. When the chips are down, it is the city's duty to protect the vulnerable from the harsh impacts of climate change and put measures in place to ensure that residents are water secure and protected from temperature rise. Our journey to becoming a climate resilient city is one founded on partnerships, research, knowledge sharing and private sector investment. Only through multi-sectoral partnerships can we accelerate and realize our vision of being a climate resilient city. We therefore pay tribute to all our partners and continue to welcome stakeholders that understand our challenges and wish to partner with us in solving these. City of Tswane, a city for now and the future. I am a proud citizen of Tswane. Are you? I am Steven Smokhalapa, Executive Mayor of Tswane. Service delivery is my only priority. Without you, this is not possible. I call on all of you as proud citizens to play your part. Save water, pay your municipal account, and keep the city clean. Report water leaks, potholes, and any illegal activities. Together, we can build a Tswane for all. Visit our website, the City of Swani Igniting Excellence. Okay. 
talking to you. We should go live. Testing one. Uh, okay. Are yeah. we good? Yeah. Yeah. Ready for you. But what do I mean? Let's say. Can I hear you? Let's end it, Gina. Yeah, for days. <laughs> Testing one, two. we have received the state of the capital address from the executive mayor of the city of Twani, Mr. Stevens Mokhalapa, who has just been in administration for the past 58 days. And we will hear all about that from him, including the state of the capital address, which he has just rendered to the people of Twani. Executive Mayor, thank you so much for your time. Like I was just saying, uh, that was quite a lengthy um, statement, statement, if I can put it like that, or the address. Uh, let's just take it from the beginning, rather. Uh, you have just been with or rather as executive mayor for over 58 days if we can put it like that take us through how it has been you've gone through all the seven regions within the city of Twani yeah. and what were the people saying or complaining or rather thanking you about um, having spoken to them well thank you very much it's, it's been a hit the ground running um, type of uh, 58 days. Um, I haven't been in office much. Um, I've been out in the streets because uh, for you to comprehensively know your city, you got to be out on the street. And when I took the position on the 12th of February, I said that I will focus on service delivery. So what I did when I went into office, I crafted the what we call accelerated service delivery intervention program which took me to all the seven regions in the city. In the main, the issues around the city it was the basics, you know, getting the city to do the basics, um, basic urban management in terms of cutting the grass, um, in terms of marking the roads, in terms of fixing the street lights, in terms of um, cleaning the city and collecting litter. That is what basically the people were looking for. The high level service delivery issues were about lack of water and lack of electricity and uh, roads and stormwater. Um, that is a backlog that we have in the city of, of 5 billion uh, in terms of roads and stormwater and electricity and water. Hence, you've seen in my statement I was talking about installation of prepaid meters because moving forward it will assist us to deal with two things. Firstly, to deal with lawlessness and secondly, to deal with revenue for the city because we've got a lot of illegal connections that are sprawling out which um, um, affects our grid, it affects our substations, it affects our transformers. So the best is to give people prepaid meters so that they can buy their own electricity and you have revenue for the city and you deal with illegal connections. So those were in the main the issues and obviously issues around job creation. That is why I was speaking of the six industrial nodes of Babelehi, Harangua, Watlu, Roslin, um, Eka Industria, you know, and, and Watlu, so that we can re-energize them, so that we can create jobs. And for that reason, um, yesterday I went to the launch of the Nissan, new Nissan Navara um, in um, Roslin, which is a $3 billion uh, investment into a city that will create about 1,200 jobs. Um, last week, um, we were at the Silverton Watlu one for the Fort, uh, which is also a $3 billion investment, which will create about 1,200 jobs as well so it's it's in the main it's about basic services and provision of job opportunities and economic opportunities Right. Whilst we're still on the issue of unemployment, the, you mentioned in your statement Munyetla 2021. If you can just uh, explain it in, in more detail. Munyetla 2021 um, takes away the TEPO 10,000. What Munyetla 2021 wants to achieve is to say, let us separate the two important issues. One is skills development and entrepreneurship. Um, training for young people and secondly is the issue of how do we assist them in procurement. So we firstly going to make sure that the youth businesses are given necessary skills development and entrepreneurship while after that graduating from there they will be able to access our procurement. 
And then what is the stance of the corruption within the capital city and also surrounding that? Well, that is, as, as I said, I met with the Auditor General yesterday who was giving me the 2017-18 audit report and what was found was the issue of lack of consequence management. That is why in my speech I was always talking about consequence management, which is what we need to do. We investigate these cases and there's no follow through into uh, uh, prosecution and conviction and dismissals if they have to be and recouping of the monies of the city. So uh, moving forward, this is what I've done. We have put in the performance management system. We have put the supply chain management system, uh, department under administration where we went and cleaned out the whole um, supply chain management office. We go into be employing new skilled people um, to fill that, 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 that unit. So that is what we are doing. I've established the financial disciplinary board which will deal mainly with financial misconduct within the city. And how long can we look at that administration to undergo for? Um, well, we are, um, this weekend we should be um, advertising on the job forum. The, um, the new, because of I've signed through on the microstructure, because for you to advertise the post in the city, you need to have a microstructure. So that was done last week. Um, we've signed that, and then the job forum goes over this weekend. Well, just before uh, the capital address, we also realized that the opposition party, the ANC, the EFF, F also left the chambers. No, the EFF was there. Well, the EFF, yes, quite a few, but then the ANC indefinitely. Can you give it to us, or rather explain to us what is your stance in, with that? It's just, um, it's a city season, it's elections. We are about two, three weeks to elections, and any desperate party that is losing power will engage in such shenanigans. You know, so it's just a cheap political stance. Uh, the state of the city as well being advertised to be on the 11th. If people decide on the day of the state of the city that they're going to do um, some spurious service delivery protest, um, you know, it's out of our hands. And this has been already been um, plans have been put in place. So the program of government has to continue. So I just say shame on the ANC. It's just the last kick of a dying horse. Um, they know that they are facing electoral loss. And this is one of those cheap stunts and cheap gimmicks that they are doing, which that really doesn't affect service delivery and affect our resolute to ensure that government and services to the people are the key priority. All right. Mr. Stevens, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. That was the executive mayor, Mr. Stevens Mokhalapa, saying that Mushumo Ochaba Diata.